Hello everyone, my name is Zach Antunes and I'm a solutions architect here at dBeaver. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to the first of our desktop products, dBeaver Lite. In this video series, I'm going to progressively demonstrate the unique capabilities of each dBeaver product edition. I'll begin by showing you everything available in Lite edition, then I'll move on to Enterprise Edition, highlighting the features that distinguish it from Lite, then do the same for Ultimate Edition, and so on and so forth. But just remember, Enterprise includes everything in Lite, and Ultimate includes everything in Enterprise. Now, dBeaver Lite is tailored specifically for business users. Think data analysts, financial analysts, or professionals in sales and marketing who require intuitive, quick, and secure access to data. If your role involves more advanced database management tasks like migrating databases, creating backups, or integrating workflows with tools such as GitHub, I encourage you to watch my demo of dBeaver Enterprise Edition, which is designed specifically for database administrators and developers. With that clarified, let's jump right in. So you are looking at the dBeaver user interface. On the left, you can see I've got some connections here. I will just minimize those for right now. And then on the right, you can see I've got a table open. Where I'm going to direct your attention now, though, is this Projects tab. And so projects will become more important when we start talking about collaboration in the other versions. But for now, just know that projects are a great way to organize your workflow. So your connections, your bookmarks, your scripts, Anything that you want to separate and organize, you can do it with a folder in your project. Now, moving on to the connections section. So we've got over 100 different types of connections that you can utilize. So I'll just let you take a gander there. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to jump into my MySQL connection since this is one of the most popular databases that we support. But again, we support over 100. And so each connection type is going to be different and the features are going to be different as well. One of the features that I particularly like in the pro version that I think is particularly useful at least is the authentication piece. So with dBeaver Pro, you get much more authentication options than with dBeaver Open Source. So with MySQL, you can see I can use AWS, I can use Microsoft Entra ID, I could use Kerberos, and I can also use two-factor authentication. And then you can also see here is where we put the server credentials and uh, your user credentials if you are using the uh, native authentication schema, but we don't typically recommend that. Uh, and probably your security and IT team aren't gonna like that either. Pretty much every database also has this concept of driver properties. And driver properties are basically extra settings that you can use to get a little bit more granular with your database. I need to use a public key retrieval, so I actually turned that on with MySQL, but there's some features for connection timeout, there's some load balancing features as well, and then if you hover your cursor over, we'll give you a little description of what each driver property does. Moving on, you can use an SSH tunnel, so for example, if your IT team doesn't want to open up a window into your firewall, uh, you can use an SSH tunnel to get in. You can also use a jump server. And then the neat thing as well about dBeaver is that you can use this network profile feature. So for example, if you are using that SSH tunnel or perhaps you're using Kubernetes, EC2, or a proxy, you can create these settings in dBeaver and then reuse those settings across different connections so that you don't need to repetitively set up like an SSH tunnel or a proxy. Every time you want to set up a connection in dBeaver, you can reuse it save a little bit of time as well. Now, once you're connected, which I am to MySQL, I'm connected to this IT software in inventory table, it basically looks like and behaves like an Excel file. So you can obviously view the data, you can edit this data if you'd like. So I'll just put those back. You can uh, add rows, you can remove rows, you can format rows, you can color coordinate everything. You can even open it uh, in Excel uh, using dBeaver. In terms of visualization, we do have some tools to help out. Uh, I'll just point out that you can uh, view the data as a text if you want to, uh, but you can also view it as a chart, which can be helpful for some folks. So as you can see, I've got my software 
uh, name down here and then I've got the cost of the software here on the left. You can change these settings around. So if you wanted to do uh, the cost per user, what have you, you can change the x-axis and you can also change the y-axis and some other settings as well. And then you can also view these as a line chart and you can view these as a pie chart as well. Now moving on, in terms of visualization, you do have some features to help you out with in terms of the entity relationships. So it's really nice being able to see the entity relationship diagram and here's your window into that. You can, actually I'll open that over here so you can see it. You can choose different uh, styles if you'd like. So you could show nullability if you'd like. You could show different attributes, primary keys if you'd like. Take that back, I'll just go back to all. And then there's different notations. So if you want to do this notation or you want to do that notation, uh, perhaps that'll help you out as well. And then you also have different router options. So you can just show different, uh, different way to show the paths between the uh, relationships as well. Uh, another area where you're probably going to be spending a lot of time is in the SQL editor. So you can get pretty granular with the SQL editor. I'm just going to do a very basic script so you can see how the autocomplete works. It uh, opens that for me and then I'll do the, uh, which one looks big? How about the voice, the invoice rather? Opens up the table for me, knows where the table is, so that's helpful. Execute that. And then I can see all of my uh, invoices that I have between my different um, faux customers. Uh, and then you can get even more granular than that. So I'll just show you my uh, more complex uh, script that I have. So as you can see, I'm using common, common table expressions. I'm using aggregates, ranks, case statements. And then it kind of co color coordinates things for you, does some um, uh, spell check for you as well. Uh, not actually sure what the issue down there is. Uh, and then when I execute that, then it'll create a nice little ranking for me here on the right, uh, separated by the IT department here, or rather the, um, the uh, business department here on the left, and then create some other columns for me, lets me know where my license status is. So you can get very granular with the SQL editor. Now, uh, one question that might occur to you is what if you're not necessarily a SQL expert? So let's jump back into my Chinook table. Let's open this up. So we do have a couple tools to help you out if you're by chance not a SQL expert. Uh, one nice tool is we have this AI smart completion. So I could say something like, show me all of the invoices from Germany. Let's see how that works writes out the script for me, I can execute that. And then here I've got all of my invoices uh, in the, um, from the invoice table. So really helpful for, with that, I, I'd encourage you to check out um, the different options that we have for your AI integration. So right now I'm plugged into ChatGPT, but there's a couple others you can use as well, and you can also host your own as well. And then the next um, feature I'll show you, I'll open up this SQL editor once more is the visual query builder. So let's say again, I'm not necessarily a SQL expert, uh, but I wanna see some tables joined together. So let's see this album table. How about the artist associated with that album and then the track associated with that album. So you can see it's already starting to build the query for me, but I could do the name of that album. Let's do the name of the artist on that album and then the tracks that are attached to that album. Run that. And then I got a nice, neat join with all these different albums, uh, the name of the band, and then the different uh, tracks that are available on that album as well. As well with the pro version with DB Beaver Lite, you do get the NoSQL driver. So right now I've got, I'm attached to this Mongo database, MongoDB, but you can do DocumentDB, uh, a lot of other NoSQL options that are out there. I will show you what it looks like for this movies uh, database, the Enflix database, which you might be familiar with. And as you can see, we actually turned the NoSQL database into rows and columns for you, just to make it a little bit more readable. 
Uh, we'll also nest these rules for you with some, which some folks, or rather nest these columns for you, which some folks find useful. And then you can also view it as a JSON file if you'd like. So if you wanted to uh, view it like how you'd normally view it, uh, you can go ahead and view it as a JSON file. But uh, I personally like to view it as rows and columns, just makes it a little bit easier for me. Now you can run uh, SQL scripts, some SQL scripts against MongoDB. You're not gonna be able to run uh, probably every SQL command that's out there, but we do support JavaScript as well. So uh, right now, let's say I wanna go into my movies database and I wanna find the movies that have an IMDB rating greater than nine, run that. And just like that, I can see all the movies that have an IMDB rating greater than nine. Uh, so yeah, feel free to check that out. Uh, give it give it a shot with uh, JavaScript. Um, and uh, yeah, access your NoSQL databases to your heart's content. Now, the last feature I will show you is the query manager. And so the query manager is uh, basically a log of your uh, queries that you ran from a given session. I will uh, do that. Uh, so you can, if maybe you forgot a query, you want to see what query you ran a specific day. Yep, you can go back in time and you can just see uh, what query you ran. Let's see if you can find a query that didn't run successfully. So it'll tell you that as well. Query failed, gives you the, the error message down there as well. And then that is everything that I wanted to show you. I think those are some of the main features that you'll find useful, but there's plenty of other features as well that you'll probably find useful. I hope it was informative. I've got other videos on YouTube for our other versions. Again, this is dBeaver Lite, which is designed for folks in the front office, perhaps in sales, data, or business analysis. I encourage you to check out our other versions if you're looking for more features, such as features for database maintenance, integration with Git, as well as integration with your cloud service providers. If you'd like to get in touch with us to see this or any other things you may have feel that or you may feel that I may have missed, feel free to reach out to us via our email channels, either sales at dbeaver.com or support at dbeaver.com. As well, you can contact me directly on LinkedIn. My name is Zach Antunes. I'm a solutions architect here at dbeaver, and thank you for watching.